Dear friends, in this video, we are going to learn five different ways to create a data frame variable. For example, creating a data frame from a CSV file, creating it from an Excel file or a dictionary, or let's say list of tuples or list of dictionaries. So I'm going to teach you all different five ways to create a data frame variable. Mastering data frame is one of the fundamental skill for anyone who is diving into data science. Now having knowledge on data frame will help you to handle large data sets and also will help you to explore those data sets and identify some meaningful data for the business. Now let's learn how do you first create or handle this data frame when you have been given a huge data set in any different form. So let's get started without making any further delay. So the very first thing is using CSV file. Let me show you one of the CSV file which I have. Now to read any CSV file which contains some amount of data, you can also create one Excel file and save it as .csv with some minimum data. Now once you have a CSV file, how do you really convert that to a data frame? Now the very first thing is we are going to import pandas as pd. You can give any alias name but this is the standard alias name recommended by in the pandas documentation. So I have written pd and then let's read it. Now to read it first of all create a variable. So I am going to create a variable called data frame 1 equals to use the alias name pd then the function that we are using here is read underscore csv okay read underscore csv is the function that all that you have to remember now how do you pass the file path now to pass the file path let me locate the file so this is the csv file on my screen i'm going to right click on this with the shift key and i'm going to copy this path and let's go back and I'm going to simply paste this. So it by default comes with double quote. And before the double quote, simply write R string. Okay. By writing R string, this backward slashes, you know, will be considered. I mean, you will not get any error. So once you do this, simply print it. So I'm printing DF1, shift enter. You don't have to really use a print command when it comes to data frame. Simply you can print it using DF. So you can see DF1. And I got the data. This is the first way. Now the second way, if I have to read it from an Excel file. Now for that, let's create another variable called df2 equals to, and I'm going to say pd dot. For CSV, we have used read underscore CSV. Now for Excel, it's again simple read underscore Excel. Okay, so this is what you have to use, and then within parenthesis, you have to pass that file path so let me locate the file so this is my file i'm going to again shift right click and okay i did not get the copy as path let me try again shift right click and i should get copy as path yes now let me paste this with the r string done and here simply print this df2 shift enter and you can see now it has read it read the data from the excel and stored the data into the data frame variable great so we learned the second way now let's learn the third way using a dictionary now for a dictionary i have already drafted something like this you can see there's an employee now dictionary will start with curly braces end with curly braces and it has got some key names for example name is a key date of joining and salary and these are multiple different names of the employees a b c d e just to keep it simple date of joining and then salary this is the dictionary let us simply copy this this will save some time instead of typing it here completely so i have got my dictionary variable now how do you convert this dictionary variable to a data frame is also quite simple let's name it as df3 equals to and then take the alias name pd and here we will be using data frame. Here it's not like read underscore dictionary. It is a data frame. Okay. Only for CSV and Excel you have got that. I am going to show you the documentation also later and then towards the end of the video. But here for a dictionary, 
I'm simply writing PD dot data frame and within parenthesis simply pass that variable. So this is, this is my variable done and try to print this. So if you print this, you can see I have got a name column, I have got a date of joining column, I have got a salary column and the required values been converted to a table format. Data frame means it's a row and columns. Okay, so we learned the third one. Now let's learn the fourth uh, way to do into convert into a data frame. So it is list of tuples. Now when it comes to tuples, you know they are immutable. I mean you cannot change the values one set when they have kept in they will be kept in parenthesis now you can see these are one first tuple second tuple third tuple fourth tuple fifth tuple and because i said list of tuples list has to be put inside the square bracket so this is my data so simply let me copy this and paste it here and let's create another variable here called uh, let's say df4 equals to then say pd dot here also you will be using the data frame method okay simply say dot data frame and then inside this you have to pass this variable employee underscore data that is the first thing comma here what is happening you only have values so how does python understand this value is name this value is date of joining this value is salary so you have to manually define it when it comes to a tuple okay so how do you define it simply say columns okay equals to and list of columns right we have got multiple list so the first one is the within single quote simply say name then put a comma and the, then again the next thing that we have is date of joining comma and the third thing that we have got is salary so whatever your columns are you just simply have to mention it very important point remember when it comes to tuples you have to define columns like this okay but the method is same data frame for dictionary also same for tuples also same it's, it's just data frame just for list you are typing for dictionary you are simply passing it like this okay all right now let's print the df4 shift enter and you can see name date of joining salary the tuple has now been converted to a data frame Great, so we got this. Now the next thing that we will learn, the fifth one, using list of dictionaries. Now list of dictionaries, again, let me copy this. Let me explain this. List means we'll start with square bracket, end with square bracket. And dictionary means it always ha has a key and a value, right? The value can, can be in any form. Now in this one, this is in a simple form, in curly braces, key, value, key value key value key value okay so like this this is a list of dictionaries so let me copy this i'm going to probably provide this in the description of the video so you don't have to type it uh, you can simply practice this uh, so i'll provide it in the you know description of the video so i've got the list of dictionaries here so let's create a variable let me create a variable called df5 equals to pd dot again will go with data frame inside this simply pass employee data so by passing the variable itself because it has got the column names you don't have to specifically mention it now if you simply print it df5 and shift enter you can see the list of dictionary has now been converted to data frame so pretty useful uh, techniques that you have learned how do you convert different data formats into a data frame now what you really need in the future is you need uh, documentation so simply type pandas input output io okay so and here you would find a link io tools go there now they have got a huge list of uh, you know different uh, commands using which you will be able to read different functions now here if you see read for read underscore sql is there right and there are many useful ones so let's say read underscore json this also is quite useful read underscore csv we have seen it read underscore html so there are multiple different documentation that you will be able to find and you'll be able to do the job so these are a couple of you know uh, important ones which i've shown you in this video 
so that's the scope of this video guys so let's move on to our next video and keep learning do subscribe to the channel in case you have not done it already and give it a like to all the videos and let me know the contents that you're reading from my channel are you able to understand them properly or not if you are able if you are able to understand the contents please do type yes it'll be nice to see them thank you guys so let's move on to our next topic